Uh, last time uh, I, I ended by talking about, about Machiavelli uh, as a both a revolutionary in many ways and a reformer of the moral vocabulary about virtue and vice, good and evil. Machiavelli seeks to replace, to, trans to transpose an older vocabulary associated both with Plato and certainly most, Im perhaps more importantly, with biblical sources, wants to transform altogether the language of virtue, to give it a new kind of meaning, to change it from either Platonic or Christian otherworldliness to a greater sense of worldly power. Virtue is for him, or to use his term again, virtu, is related with manliness, with force, with power. Uh, he tells us in chapter 25 of the, of the Prince, uh, the ethic of the Prince must be one of audacity, uh, and even more audacity, and that famous uh, and, and, and very volatile image he uses, fortune is a woman, <coughs> and you must know how, the prince must know how to conquer the woman. It must be used through <coughs> policies of force, brutality, audacity. Uh, this is the language of Machiavelli. Virtue uh, is associated with the quest for worldly glory, with ambition, uh, with the desire to... Um, uh, achieve success. Uh, and that's what I want to talk about at greater length today. I want to talk about what in uh, political and philosophical literature about this is called the problem of dirty hands. That if you want to join the political game, you must be prepared to get your hands dirty. And what Machiavelli means by that. How he uh, comes to comes to this problem. <coughs> In order, he argues, to effect a transformation of European morality. It is, in other words, to teach the prince, as he says in chapter 15, how not to be good. You have to go to the source of the morality. You have to go to the source of morality to effect the maxims to affect the standards that govern our lives, it is necessary to go to the source of those standards and those maxims, and that can only be found in religion. Oddly, it seems in some ways, religion does not seem to be a major theme of the prince. Uh, in, a mem in a memorable passage, God bless you, in a memorable passage from chapter 18, Machiavelli advises the prince always to cultivate the appearance of religion. The prince, he writes, should appear all mercy, all faith, all honesty, all humanity, and all religion, <coughs> he writes, adding, nothing is more necessary to appear to have this last quality. Uh, the point is clear. The appearance of religion, by, by which he clearly means Christianity, is good, while the actual practice of it is harmful. Think about the way in which that transforms uh, what Plato says about justice uh, in his answer to Glaucon in Book Two of the of the Republic, where uh, or Thrasymachus, where they both say it is more important is is it not more important to have the appearance of being just than than the reality of it? And here you see Machiavelli in a way adding his voice to that chorus. It is much better to have the appearance than the reality of religion. But in order to understand or to discover the core of Machiavelli's teachings about religion, I have to make a slight detour away from the prince and to his discourses on Livy. And in maybe the most important chapter of that book, <coughs> book two, chapter two, called Concerning the Kinds of People the Romans Had to Fight and How Obstinately They Defended Their Freedom, long title for a chapter, to be sure, but here Machiavelli develops a powerful contrast between two opposed and mutually incompatible moral codes, uh, the Christian and the pagan. If one asks oneself, Machiavelli writes, if one asks oneself how it came about that people of old 
People of old, in, old in, in the ancient world, were more fond of liberty than we are today. I think the answer, he says, is due to the same cause that makes men today less bold than they used to be. Less bold. And this is due, I think, to the difference between our education and that of bygone days. So what precisely is the difference that Machiavelli refers to here between our education and the education of bygone days that makes people or that made people in the ancient world more fond of liberty, as he says, than those of our contemporaries, or <coughs> Machiavelli's contemporaries. Machiavelli's emphasis here on education, particularly moral and religious education, is the key difference between the ancient times and his own. These two different ages, he believes, advance two very different systems of moral and religious education, one based on pagan worldliness and the other based on Christian innocence. And it is that conflict, as it were, between what we might call worldliness and innocence that is the <coughs> core uh, of Machiavelli's uh, moral code. Let me quote Machiavelli's passage from the discourses at some length, because I think it's very revealing. Our religion, he writes, obviously thinking of the Catholic Christianity of his time, our religion, he writes, has glorified humble and contemplative men, monks, priests, uh, you, you know, humble and contemplative men, rather than men of action. It is assigned as man's highest good humility, abnegation, and contempt for mundane things. Whereas the other, that is to say the ancient moral code, whereas the other identified it with magnanimity, bodily strength, and everything that conduces to make men very bold. And if our religion, he says, demands that in you there be strength, what it asks for is the strength to suffer rather than to do bold things. In other words, he says, Christian strength, the strength of the Christian, is the strength to suffer, thinking of Jesus on the cross, rather than to, as he puts it, do bold things. And it is not for Machiavelli simply the existence of these two different moralities that is at stake. By softening morals, he believes, by making us gentler, uh, Christianity has had some deeply perverse effects upon politics, so he claims. This pattern of life, Machiavelli continues, appears to have made the world weak and to have handed it over to the prey of the wicked. This pattern of life, this pattern of education, of moral education, introduced by the Bible and scripture and uh, Christianity, has made the world weak. In other words, by teaching humility, self-abnegation, purity of heart, Christianity has made it difficult to develop qualities necessary for the defense of political liberty. Christianity has made the world weak, or if you want to use his, again, highly charged word for that, it has made the world effeminate. Machiavelli would no doubt be taken up against some board of offense today for using such a term, but that's his language. What can I say? This is why he concludes there are fewer republics today than in the time of the ancients because we do not have the same love of freedom that they did. Now Machiavelli's explicit, explicit referencing of the ancient civil religions, the ancient civil theology, is a, direct, is a direct tribute to the role of Numa, Numa, N-U-M-A, Numa, uh, the, in, in Livy's famous history of the Roman Republic. Justin, who is an authority on this text, can tell you more about it if you like. But in the opening books of Livy, he tells the story of how Rome was founded by Romulus, who had murdered his brother Remus. But after this, it required a second founding. And the second founding was the work of a man named Numa, who Livy writes, determined that Rome 
which had originally been established through force of arms, should be re-established through justice, laws, and proper <coughs> observances, in other words, a religion. In order to complete the founding of the city, it was necessary to establish its gods and ensure proper respect for the law. Numa was uh, the bringer of the, uh, of the Roman uh, legal codes respecting religion, proper observances, and the like. So, but Machiavelli, Machiavelli uses Livy and, Liv and, and the story about Rome's second founding to bring home an important lesson about the utility of religion. Religion, he tells the reader, is not to be evaluated by its truth content, but for its consequences for society. But the story of Numa, or his use of that story, tells us more, more than just a lesson about the social utility of religion. At the time of the founding of Rome, Machiavelli writes, Religion was necessary to temper and control the warlike character uh, of the Romans. Uh, religion had, had to bring a softening effect upon, again, the violent and, and, and bestial character of the, of the early Romans. But for us today, Machiavelli writes, religion has to serve the opposite purpose. It must instill something of a fighting spirit into people who have lost their instinct uh, to resist encroachments on their liberty. I mean, in many ways, this is the deeper meaning uh, of Machiavelli's slogan, one's own arms. Uh, he uses in a, in a variety of passages the, 